All right, let's talk about axes and symmetry and make our lives a little bit easier. So if we wanted to sculpt a head, uh, what we're going to need to do, let's go just drag that undo slider all the way back. Or if you're just joining us, just grab a poly uh, sphere 3D dragon on your canvas, go into edit mode, and then hit make poly mesh 3D. So we're back where we started here, and I want to sculpt the face. Now the first thing I want to do is orient myself in space in ZBrush. This is very important. So what we're going to do is turn on our floor plane here. And you can see already, oh man, this, if this was my head and I started sculpting here, like, okay, I'm going to sculpt an eyeball and a mouth here, and then I, you know, exported this to another program, he'd be upside down. Because the floor plane is our y-axis, and that's the green area here. And also, he's not even facing forward, because this blue line right here is shooting out this way. And ZBrush, we've talked about this before, ZBrush is Z forward, Y up. So the Y plane is the green plane, and obviously the opposite of this bottom is top, so Y up is away from this floor plane. So if I go through here, I'm going to go undo all of this. And so now that I have my floor turned on and I'm oriented, I know that this is forward, so this is the way I want my face to be, and also I want my head to be, you know, the neck area to be touching the ground, because that's down. So the first thing in ZBrush you want to do is orient yourself in space. A good way to do that is with the floor plane. So let's go ahead and undo that with Control z and let's talk about how we want to sculpt in symmetry to save us some time. So because we've already talked about these brush settings over here, I'm going to go ahead and click this little white dot here to get rid of the brush. And we're going to take our transform menu and pull that over to that other side. Again, these little dividers here, you can double click them. And that will go ahead and open up these docking palette docks. And then you can drag over any menu using this white dot. So now with transform open, you're going to see we have an activate symmetry button. Now the cool thing about this is if you hit the X key on your keyboard, and of course if you hover over this, you're going to see the hotkey is X. Hold down control for more information. Right now, that automatically turns on X symmetry. So usually when you're working on something, a human face, usually human faces have some sort of symmetry. It's, you don't have to make everything perfectly symmetrical, but I would suggest just as a production best practice, is to go ahead and sculpt and create as symmetrically as you can on an object that's generally symmetrical and then break symmetry at the end just to kind of save you a little bit of time. So for example, if we wanted to sculpt a simple face, we can go back to our standard brush here and that is just B, S, T until we assign our hotkeys. And now we can hold down Alt and we can kind of dig in a little bit. Again, hold down Alt, we can make a smiley face here and then we'll just put a little nose on there. Now because we have symmetry turned on, you're going to see we have two dots. The dot on the right side is where my brush is, the dot on the left side is the other side of my object. And that is essentially X symmetry. That's what's on by default in ZBrush. There's a couple more symmetrical modes that you might want to use. I'm going to go ahead and undo a couple times. And let's say we want to activate symmetry in X and Y symmetry. Now remember, Y, here's our floor plane. Y is up, Z is forward, and then X is side to side. So we have side to side symmetry, and then we just turned on up and down symmetry. So now when we sculpt, we can sculpt top to bottom, and then up and down. So we can very quickly, I mean, if you're sculpting a face in this would look kind of weird, kind of gets weird, but if you're doing anything ornamental or a specific type of object, that might come in handy. If you turn on X, Y, and Z symmetry, again, Z symmetry is forward and back. So here's the forward, the blue line coming out is forward. Now we can sculpt an X, Y, and Z symmetry all at the same time. Another cool one is radial symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off X, Y, and Z. And you also might see M is turned on, mirror symmetry. I'd leave that alone, just keep that on. Um, so if you turn on uh, X symmetry, so here's X symmetry. Now if you turn on X symmetry with radial, what that's going to do is take our X axis, which is this red line right here, and it's, you know, here, here's the best way I can explain this. The X axis, this red line, is going left to right. If I have radial symmetry off, we're just sculpting across that axis. If I have radial symmetry on, that's the radial axis that the symmetry is going to be across. So left to right is our radial symmetry if that makes any sense. Now, with the radial symmetry, we have a radial count. It's set to 8 by default. So if I start brushing on my object, you're going to see we have 8 lines going around our object here. If you click on X and Y, we're going to have X and Y symmetry here. And then X, Y, and Z is going to just be crazy symmetry here. Usually when you're using radial symmetry, unless you're doing something very specific, you're going to have just one of these axes turned on. So if we do uh, Y, you can see we can kind of go Y and then Z. Oops. And then just Z will go down the Z axis. So for example, if we turn on Y symmetry and you have a radial count set at 8, uh, we can kind of sculpt in our object here. And if you crank this radial count up to say like 60, now it's going to have a lot of little brushes. It's basically every one of those dots is a new brush, so you're going to be able to manipulate your object very, very quickly in this radial symmetry. So you can kind of use it as a kind of a potter's wheel to kind of get these kind of shapes. And this might remind you of when we were messing with the primitives over here, 
the Sweet Profile 3D that we were using. But I'm going to go back to our Primitive Mesh 3D we were using here. So again, we can use hold down Shift and use Smooth. We can hold down Alt and kind of dig into our object. We can pull out. We can use different brushes. We can switch over to our clay brush here. We can hit B, C, L. Now we can use our clay brush. So all sorts of different brushes we can use. And we can use X, Y, and Z symmetry or X, Y, and Z symmetry in collaboration with our radial symmetry.